So this is the, the user-friendly lighting hole. Um, we want to make sure that we don't get this too tight on here or it breaks it. Okay, um, there's also nice things if when you're really on your end, you should go around and do a safety check first, make sure all the valves are closed, the bungs are in, these things are tight, things that you think are capped are in fact capped, um, that the top of the reactor has the lid on here, uh, great shakers there, we have a battery, um, there's water in the radiator, okay. Make sure all your condensates are ah, are empty. Okay, so okay, so that's a victory. And if it, look at that, totally clear. Okay, no tar in the system. Okay, another fun thing to do is to um, take this off. Okay, everyone come over and look at this for a second. Um, so you know, a common problem in the field: if you mess up, if you fully mess up, you'll you'll get sticky stuff that comes through the, through the, the system, and will st stick the um, um, the throttle body in here, okay? But you should see in here that this thing is totally clean. And so if you're at, over time using it and that thing's not looking clean, you have, you have some issue going on, okay? You can also look in the tube and go, oh, you know, like gas fire tubes don't usually look like that, okay? It's victory. So um, if your 20 kW is having issues, like making sure this thing works is, is, is important. In the future, this will be like the 10 kW where you can actually get to the linkage and make, you can see it moving. But this is a natural gas one, a throttle body, so you, um, it's all, uh, and they don't have access to it. Okay. So, to start, we're going to do a three-stage start. Okay. We're going to first turn the blower to, um, Jay was saying, between 10 and 20 units. That means between one and two inches of water. And then you always leave the air blower on just a tad, so you don't have much. Okay. I like to say just put it on 15, 1 1.5 inches, okay? So we turn up the gas to 1.5, uh, which is the pressure at the combustion. That is the, oh wait, I shouldn't, okay? And now we stick our hoo-ha on here. And, okay, and you guys should stay out of that. Okay, and then we're going to sit here and hold this thing in until we see the temperatures come up. Can you give it a slight amount of air? Now the problem is my, we can't have an immaculate demo here because it was already about 150 degrees. Where's that too? The reactor, I guess it had been run earlier today. So that's actually lit now. No, no, a little more. I can see it. Did it catch? Yeah. Okay, so leave it. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. It's fine, leave it alone, leave it alone. Okay, so what we would do in a usual situation here that this hadn't been run, we're going to. You guys come, come over here, stay out of the, down, the downwind area. Okay, so we have the lighting port open. Uh, we put this on 1.5 inches of water, or 15, and we watch the temperature rise with the with with our lighter in the hole. As soon as we see the temperature get up to about 80 or 100 degrees, we go, okay, it's lit in there. Now we put on the cap. Okay. Okay, and once you put that cap on, the air now comes in the regular air inlet, which is this check valve right here. Okay. And that lets the air come in through all the air lines, through all five nozzles, and we're now going to get the, the combustion going in the whole hearth, okay? So at this point, we typically bring the, the, the blowers up to about three or four inches, uh, which will be 30 or 40 on here, still not all the way. And we now want to see the temperatures get up into the two, 300 sort of range. That tells us we've established the fire in there, okay? And we're seeing some temperatures in the two, 300 sort of range. So once we see that, we know we have good fire in there. We turn it up to 11, which is, you know, takes us over the top into the good gas making area. Okay. Now, while we're doing that, um, we want to, we have a separate air 
air control here, which is the air blower, and uh, you have to manually mix it to get to a nice to a nice burn. We're driving both the gas and the air into a swirl burner over there. If you just do it as draft and let it burn out the top, you get a lot of un, unburned fuel and it smells nasty, okay? Problem is you can like to, do, do too much here um, and at times put it out, so you can go over lean or, if, or have it completely off and you'll get, if it wasn't so uh, light out, you'd see the flame coming out the top right now. So usually you kind of do it with sound. Okay, so when you hear the that means it sucks it down inside. Okay, so gas up to 11, air usually is somewhere around the 6 to 7 range, and then you let it sit here and, and, and come up to temperature. So. Provide recordings of the sounds so that we can. What? The recording an MP3 of, this? MP3 of the sounds so we know what to look for. Yeah. Okay, so we're watching the temperatures come up here. Remember, our two main temperatures, top of reduction and bottom of reduction. Top of the reduction really means the restriction, the restriction in the heart. That's the main point that we're measuring to determine whether we have adequate temperature for tar, tar conversion. The tar cracking is happening all the way from the, you know, the beginning of combustion um, down through some, some stage in reduction. But we, we found through we did a lot of testing to figure out what, what, what were the temperatures that were most indicative um, of, of good tar conversion. What matters is not to get a spot high temperature in front of the nozzles, but to fill that whole combustion area in there with a, a combustion lobe that has a good extension such that um, you have a large area for the tar gas to go through. So what you want to really see is that combustion lobe is spread, not that it's made little spot high temperatures. And a good place to measure that is at the restrictions, because that means we've got this lobe that's come down and it's both come in as well as down some distance. So we were doing offline um, um, tar measurements, tar testing, um, with thermocouples all over the bell. And um, after analyzing the data afterwards, we found that the, the temperature reading um, point that most closely tracked the variation in tar made was that one taken right at the restriction which makes sense, okay? So, once you know that, and you know what, what are the temperatures that have made certain amounts of tar, now you don't have to measure the tar anymore, you just measure the temperature, which is really easy, okay? So we have a temperature profile that we can predict what the tar performance is gonna be, and that's what all these numbers we're telling you are based on, okay? Measuring temperature is really easy, measuring tar is very difficult, okay? So we've, there was, a, in the beginning of this, a lot of mapping of the reactor, um, um, with all sorts of offline instruments and then reducing all that knowledge to things that were very easy to measure with temperature and pressure. And that's now the system that, that's automated in here. Okay? And that's what we refer to as the, the speedometer and tachometer. Okay? The pressure readings are kind of like your speedometer. It tells you how fast it's going, how much stuff's going through. The temperature readings tell you how hard the reactor's working. Okay? okay, so things are still coming up, though slowly. We have 500 at the top. 620 at the base, they're reversed, oddly. When these things start up, all sorts of weird things happen depending on how the fuel's sitting in there. Sometimes it'll come up in order that the top is high and the bottom is low as it should be, because the temperature should be going down through reduction. Other times, if it's sat here for a long time and there's water, like the water will be pushing down from the top and the top will be cooler. And I mean, typically you, you, you run it in the startup long enough that they at least get even and ideally go towards that the, the top is higher than the bottom, okay? Sometimes if you've just filled the fuel, it can be helpful to come in here and shake this around and get it set down in. So we're gonna turn off the gas in the air, open the valve to the engine, shut the valve to the flare, and we're gonna crank it. It's important when you crank it that when you hear it fire, you don't immediately let go. Let go. You want to really hear it come up because we're, we're working gas through the filter. It's, it's mixed. It's very different than a car. Okay? And there it is. 
you, you see I held that much longer than you would ever held, hold a, a car thing. particular fuel, we have no load on it, um, it's okay. Now, if there was more moisture in there, you might have to put some load on it before it would keep at minimum temperatures. So again, you know, the challenge in a gasifier is, is the variables are, you're, you're, you're running your refinery at the engine. Um, the variables are changing. So put different fuel in, different moisture, uh, it changes what, what, what the specific fuel is that's coming out for the engine. You never thought you needed a small buffer to the, the volume you would need for that is very large. Okay. Okay. And um, sure, it can help, but it's in some ways delaying whatever the problem is in here getting to the engine. Um, you're you're going to end up with that. When you say over here, you mean in the reactor, right? Yeah. Okay. 